Welcome to part three of our drawing process overview in Creo Parametric. In this video, we are going to cover three main topics, notes, geometric tolerances, and symbols. Here I am on sheet one of the drawing. I'm going to jump over to sheet two for the engine block to create my first note. I'm going to make it up in the right hand corner. But first, I'm going to change the material for the engine block. If I expand the design items folder for the model tree, right now there is no material in here. If I select the engine block, I can right click and choose open. And now the part is open in its own separate window. One of the easy ways to assign a material is to right mouse click on the top node in the model tree and choose edit materials. Here we have the materials dialog box. I'll just go to the legacy materials right click on steel. Oh, actually double click on it and steel is assigned. I will click the okay button. If we expand the design items folder, now we have materials listed underneath here. There is the steel. I'm going to take a look at my model parameters. I'll go to tools and parameters. And here's the dialog box. Let me make the name column a little bit wider. The name of the parameter that holds the material is called PTC master material. So I'm going to use that in my note. Let's click the OK button and I'm going to hop back over to my window with the drawing to create a note on the annotate tab. Here we have our note command. There are a few different kinds of notes that you can create. The most common kinds are the leader note and the unattached note. Let me click on unattached note. And then we're going to pick our location for where we want the note to be. Now I can just start typing the text. I will type in material and then a colon. And then to reference that parameter from the model, you're going to use the ampersand, also known as the and sign. So let me use shift seven, which is ampersand. And the name of that material again was PTC master material with underscores. Now I will click outside of the note. And you'll see that it automatically populated with the value of the parameter. Be aware that you can click on the note and you have a formatting tab where you can do things like change the height, change the font and so forth. Maybe you make it bold, whatever kind of formatting that you want to do. So that is good for my first note. I'm going to jump over to the first sheet. You can also create your own standard notes that you want to appear on drawings. So for example, if I go to the note command, well, let me just pick around over here to place it in the format tab. We have a note from file command. And when I click on it, it goes to my note directory, the one indicated by pro underscore note underscore DIR. That is a configuration option. And I have a standard proprietary note. Let me select it and then choose open. And now it placed the contents of that note on my sheet. Another very common set of notes that people have are your different standard notes, depending on your machining process. Let's go over to the cylinder head sheet and I'm going to zoom out and I've got a nice big area where I can put my different standard notes. So let's go to the note command and I'll locate it in the upper left hand corner. Let's go to note from file and I'll grab my machined notes and then click on the open button. There we have it populated in here. And very often, sometimes people put these different notes in their drawing template so that they can modify them and have them automatically populated on the drawing sheet when they create a brand new drawing. Okay, let's go back over to sheet two. In the next video, I'm going to show you how you can create additional draft entities on a drawing, but I'm going to show you how to do one of those. Let's say I want to indicate where the part marking is supposed to go. Let me go to the sketch tab and here we have a rectangle command. And I'm just going to sketch in a rectangle about yay big and just left click when I'm happy with how big it should be. I will middle mouse click to get out of the rectangle creation mode. Let's hop back over to the annotate tab. 
if I go to that drop down from the note command, here we can create a leader note. So I will attach it to that rectangle that I just created. And then let me middle mouse click where I want the note to appear. Now I will type in the text manually. Let's put apply part marking in this area. And then I can left click on the screen a couple times in order to get out of the note creation. Let me click on the note once more. You'll see that there are a bunch of squares. Those are different drag handles. And so if I want this to be a multi-line note, I'll just drag it in to be a little bit narrower. So that is good for creating notes. Now I wanna take a look at some geometric tolerances. I'm gonna to start out by going over to the model once more. Let me select the engine block, right mouse click and hold and choose open. And down at the bottom of the screen, I have my different combination states visible. I'm gonna to go to the set datums combination state. And here you can see that in the model, I have 3D annotations for my flatness tolerance and also my datum feature symbol A. Let me go over to the annotate tab. It is really recommended these days that you create your geometric tolerances and datum feature symbols in your model and then you can show them later on in the drawing. So first off, I'm going to activate the appropriate annotation plane and nope, I don't wanna place my next annotation on front. Okay, top looks good. The red arrow is the direction of the text. The blue arrow, let me rotate a little bit more. The blue arrow, and I'm gonna also turn off the display of my spin center. The blue arrow is the viewing direction for the note. And so this is correct. This is the way that I want the note to appear on the sheet. Let's click on the top plane in order to activate it. And so that way, when I go to create a new geometric tolerance, it'll be located on this annotation plane. To create the new geometric tolerance in the model itself, well, I will click on the command and then let's let the surface highlight that I want it to be on and then middle mouse click. From the geometric tolerance tab, I can change the symbol that I want to use. Maybe I want to use perpendicularity. And right now, if you take a look, the geometric tolerance has a red underline. That's an indication to me, as it says in the bottom left-hand corner of the screen, that a datum reference is required. So I can click on this button in my area for my primary, secondary, and tertiary datum references in order to pick the existing datum off of the screen. I will click the OK button, and that red underline has gone away. We can also do some further editing, like let's say I wanna change the value to 0 0.01, and it updates. So in that way, I've added a new geometric tolerance to my model. Let's also add a datum feature symbol to that tolerance. So I'll click on the datum feature symbol command and then pick on my tolerance and I can drag down where I want it to appear and then middle mouse click and it automatically used the next available letter, the letter B. Now I can show these different geometric tolerances and datum feature symbols on my drawing. Let me go back over to my drawing and let's zoom in on the front view. Now I'm going to click on the show model annotations command, which we used in the last video in order to show the different dimensions on the drawing sheet. The next tab is for your model geometric tolerances. And with that tab selected, I'm simply going to click on the front view and it previews the different tolerances that are available in here. I like both of them, so I will click on the Select All button and then OK. And now I've got them on my sheet, but they're overlapping on some different entities, so I need to adjust them. I can click on the geometric tolerance and then grab the attachment point and then move my mouse over the geometric tolerance and adjust its location, and the datum feature symbol will move along with it. Let's do the same thing for my perpendicularity. I'm gonna grab the attachment and move it down and then grab this one and move it about over here. You can see that it's actually even snapping into my different snap lines that already exist. 
but I'm just gonna eyeball it about over here or so, and then left click in order to deselect, and I can say, hey, you know what, I want a little bit more of a leader for the datum feature symbol. One thing to be aware of is that you can have these different entities snap to more entities. Some people like that, some people don't. Let me show you one of the ways that you can do that. If you click on File and then Options, Options, in the Creo Parametric Options dialog box, you can select the Detailing Group. And right in the middle here, we have our snapping settings. Right now, I'm only snapping to the diagonal guide, but you could turn on other different guides like parallel, so it can be parallel to other different entities. There is a snapping sensitivity. The default value is very high. For that reason, a lot of people don't like this because it just keeps on highlighting different entities on your drawing sheet trying to snap into parallel or perpendicular or whatever uh, that you have set. Be aware that you can also control a number of these different things with your config.pro options. If I hover my mouse over that parallel symbol, it shows me the corresponding config.pro option to turn this on is DWG sketch parallel guide. I should be able to see what the snapping sensitivity is as well as it highlighting to me. But well, if you can't see what, it is, oh, there we have. DWG sketch snap sensitivity is the corresponding config.pro option for that one. Okay, let's close out of the Creo Parametric Options dialog box. So first I took some existing geometric tolerances from the model and showed them on the drawing, but you can also create your geometric tolerances and datum feature symbols right on the drawing itself. So for example, let's say I wanna create my flatness tolerance in this particular view. On the Annotate tab, I will click on Geometric Tolerance, and then I'll pick the surface that I want it associated with, middle mouse click. And right now it's giving me a position tolerance. Let me change that to flatness, and I'll change the value here to 0.05 and hit the Enter key. And then I can deselect it, and it is created. And then I realize, oh wait, that's not the surface that I want it attached to. I can click on it, and as I move my mouse over the arrowhead, there's that little sort of symbol that has a box with a bunch of different lines in it. If I right mouse click and hold, I can edit the attachment and choose to attach it to a different surface that is more appropriate and then reposition the attachment point on that surface. I'm just gonna move it a little bit away from my snap line. So I've created my first geometric tolerance now let's create a datum feature symbol for it. Here we have our datum feature symbol, and then I can click on the geometric tolerance if I want to attach it to there, and then middle mouse click, and it automatically gave it the letter A since this is the first geometric tolerance in this model. You can attach your datum feature symbols to a variety of different entities. For example, I will choose datum feature symbol and pick on this dimension and then middle mouse click. And we can also grab it and drag it so that it is not sitting right on top of the dimensional value. Let's create one more geometric tolerance in this particular drawing sheet. And let's see, I'm gonna take a look at this dimension. I say, oh, you know what? This dimension is in the wrong view. Let's choose move to view and pick the view that it should be in instead and then do some more adjustment, like I'll position it right about over here, and then I will right mouse click and hold in order to flip the arrows. Let's flip the arrows one more time. That looks a bit better. If I wanna create something like a position geometric tolerance, well, I'll go to the geometric tolerance command and then choose to attach it to the dimension. Let's change the geometric characteristic to position. And here we have the numeric value for the position. If you click in that little cell, you'll have access to the different symbols that are available. So these are your various different symbols. Let's say I want this to be max material boundary, what they used to call max material condition. I'll click on it and it adds it into the geometric tolerance. You can see the preview on the screen. For my different datum references, 
I can click in the different cells and say, hey, let's use an A datum and the B datum. And even though I haven't created the C datum yet, I can type in C here and then return later on in order to create my necessary C datum. So that's good for sheet number three and for my geometric tolerances. Now let's go over to sheet one in order to take a look at creating drawing symbols. And let me reposition. And I'm going to place a symbol over here. Right now I don't have the fasteners in the model, but I know that I'm going to put some fasteners in here and they need to be torqued. To access your symbols, you can click on the symbol command. And then you have two different symbols that you can grab from. You have the symbol palette and the symbol gallery. Let's use the symbol palette first. These are a bunch of different standard symbols that you can use and some have free attachment and they have the same ones but with leaders that you can use. Let me zoom in to show you some of these different ones. So we have one that seems to show, hey, don't touch this. Oh, here's a shock. Here's that CE symbol. I added my own custom symbol for my company's logo in here. But the one that I want to add is the torque. And let me reposition the drawing sheet on the screen. I'm just going to grab this and then drag it to where I want it to appear on the sheet for where the fasteners will eventually be. And then you'll notice that it says torque to 14 inch pounds. Well, I can double click on that value. And let's say that I wanted to use a different value. Maybe these were going to be bigger fasteners, so they needed to be torqued to 40 inch pounds. I'll type in the value and hit the enter key. And that way we have it updated with the new value. Let's jump over to sheet number two. Instead of using a gallery symbol, I'm gonna add in one of my custom symbols. Let's go to the symbol command. And then here we have our gallery. And so they have some recent symbols. They're showing up with the little symbols because I moved some around. Here are some of my other different standard symbols that I have available to me. There are also a bunch of different ones for welding that are provided to you. I'll go more into welding symbols in the next video. I have my own user-defined feature that I made in another video for my first article inspection. So I will click on it and then drag it and place it right about over here. And it's got a numerical value of one. I can click on it and then go to symbol customization. If I want to enter in different text, I also provided some predefined values for the text that should appear in here. But let's just leave it with the number one. The very last thing that I'm going to do is select the symbol. And when I click on it, it goes to the symbol tab. I'm going to go back over to the annotate tab to show you the relate to object command and I'll choose relate to object and then I can pick the geometric tolerance. And so that way, if I ever move the geometric tolerance, well, the datum feature symbol and the first article inspection symbol are going to move along with it. So there you have it. That's how you can work on your notes geometric tolerances, and symbols in your Creo parametric drawings.